Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> fellow riding in, Morgan? He's a stranger for sure, Abe. Mm. That brand on his horse, I can't even read it. Good horse, though. No. Get down, stranger. Who are you, men? We're the Curry brothers. We own this ranch. How far is it to Dodge? Sixty miles, if you ride in a straight line. I want some grain for my horse. Where is it? Look, stranger, we got no grain. We're fresh out. Now, Abe, if he wants a little grain... Then he can act more polite about it. Oh, mean I've been polite enough for you? Maybe I ought to change my ways just for you. What are you, anyway? Some kid who thinks he's a man just because he's wearing a gun for the first time? Mister, I've been wearing a gun eight years, ever since I was 16. That makes you 24 and still a kid that ought to be taken out to the shed. You aim to take me out, mister? Somebody ought to. A lot of men have tried. I guess it's your turn now. Go ahead, you're wearing a gun. Oh, now, we won't have any fighting. You watch your temper, Abe. The kid don't mean nothing. The name's Tom Clegg. I ain't a kid. All right, Clegg. Forget it. You too, Abe. Well... Say you're sorry, mister. Say what? You heard me. Are you crazy? Maybe this will help you. Now draw. No, Abe. Abe, don't move, mister. You killed him. You killed my brother. Well, he hardly got his hand on his gun. Why don't you try me? Abe wasn't no gunfighter. Neither am I. Then I'll tell you what. You practice a little. I'll be in Dodge for a spell. Come see me. Oh, now, say, there is a good-looking horse, Mr. Dillon. Oh, which one, Chester? That big bay that young fellow just getting off of there. Oh? Well, ain't he? Well, I wasn't looking at the horse, Chester. Oh, you know that fella? Yeah, maybe. What are you people staring at? Aren't you Tom Clegg? What? Matt Dillon. I lost Cruces about eight years ago, wasn't it? Exactly eight years ago. I've changed some since then, Marshal Dillon. Yeah, I'm a marshal. Uh, this Chester Proudfoot, Clegg. How do you do? Hello. Hello. Please... Well, Marshal, I suppose you're remembering how I didn't dare draw on that fellow in Las Cruces. You were smart not to. He'd have killed you, sure. I left there. I went out by myself. I practiced for two years, every day. I got pretty good with a gun, Marshal. Did you? That fellow's dead now. I went back and I killed him. 
There wasn't much of a quarrel, Clegg. I don't need much, Marshal. Oh, I've killed a lot of men since then. But don't you worry about me. They always draw first. Are you telling me you've turned gunman, huh? I've got me a pretty fair reputation in New Mexico. And now you want to be known in Kansas. That's why you came here. I didn't say that. I know you're kind, Clegg. I ought to. I've killed enough of them. <laughs> Not me, Marshal. You ain't going to kill me. I'm too fast for you and I'm too smart. I'll show you someday. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso boys join in. Ready, amigos? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Chester. Yes, sir, I'm coming, Mr. Dillon. What was it you wanted? You all threw out, sir? Well, I'm through the one I was trying to open that back door again. I guess it won't never get fixed proper unless we just build us a new house. Well, Morgan Curry. All right, come on in, Morgan. Oh, Chester. Where's Abe at? It's about Abe. I come to see the marshal. Uh, is something wrong, Morgan? Marshal, you've known me and Abe a long time. I sure have. Would you say I'm a man who tells lies? You know the answer to that, Morgan. And I'll say it short. A fellow rode up to the ranch the day before yesterday, and him and Abe got into a little argument, but Abe was about willing to call it off when this fellow slapped him. And Abe went for his gun, huh? He never had a chance, Marshal. This fellow was the fastest man I ever seen. Did you say his name, Morgan? Tom Clegg. Yeah, I thought so. He's a killer, Marshal. He made Abe draw. That's what he means about being smart. No man can take being slapped. That ain't self-defense, Marshal, and he can't claim it is. The law says he can, Marshal. Look, Marshal, I ain't a coward. You know that, but there's no use my facing him. He'd kill me easy as he did Abe. Now, what good would that do? I wish I could help you, Morgan. Well, it ain't just me, Marshal. It's all the men he's going to kill before he's through. Somebody's got to stop him. Somebody will. Someday. Now, before he kills any more men. Well, it's like poisoning a wolf. Don't you see that? Morgan, I'm a lawman. When Tom Clegg breaks the law, I'll go after him. But until he does, there's nothing I can do. I don't know if you're fast enough for him, Marshal. But you're the only man I do know who might be. I'm not hired to gun men down, Morgan. He's got to be killed. And I'll admit the world would be better off without him. You said something about his being smart. Now, he claimed that. And we'll see how smart he is. Marshal, Tom Clegg's going to die, no matter what. He's going to die.
You want another beer, Matt? No, one's my limit, Kitty. One? Oh, you're expecting trouble. I didn't say that. One beer said it. <laughs> you know me too well, Kitty. But you're right about my expecting trouble. Well, I already knew about that. I've watched Morgan Curry following Clegg in and out of here for two days now. I don't know what Morgan has in mind, Kitty, but I'm sure he doesn't plan to shoot Clegg in the back or anything like that. Well, he isn't even carrying a gun. Yeah, I know. He just stands around at a distance and sort of keeps an eye on Clegg. It's driving him crazy. But Morgan's not carrying a gun. It's made Clegg helpless to do anything about it. Maybe he's trying to get him into a fist fight, Matt. Ah, Clegg wouldn't fight him, Kitty. He knows he'd get torn apart. Oh, beats me what he's up to. Well, I wish Morgan would go home and forget about it. Maybe it's you he's trying to shame, Matt. Me? What for? Uh, uh, for not doing anything about Clegg murdering his brother. It wasn't murder, Kitty. Abe drew first. The way I heard it, Clegg made him draw. And I don't care what the law calls self-defense. Well, I have to, Kitty. I have to care. Yeah. I know, Matt. Well, there they are. What? Clegg. He just went to the bar. Morgan will be along directly. Yeah. Well, you keep an eye on him, Kitty. Me? Keep an eye on him? I got to ride out into the country tomorrow. I'm leaving before dawn so as I can get back early in the afternoon. Well, then you better get to bed. Good night, Matt. I'll see you tomorrow, Kitty. Sure. Marshal! I want to talk to you. I'll go ahead, Clegg. Talk. It's about him. Huh? Oh, Morgan. Hey, uh, Morgan. What are you calling him for? You want me, Marshal? Yeah. Clegg here wanted to talk to me about you, Morgan. I thought maybe you ought to hear it, too. Sure, he can hear it. I want him to stop following me around, that's all. Oh, why tell me that, Clegg? Because you've got to stop him. Me stop him? He isn't breaking any law. He ain't wearing a gun. A dirty coward. There's no law that a man has to wear a gun. You it's know. making me jumpy. I don't like being stared at all the time. You got a guilty conscience about something, Clegg? You shut up. Why don't you take your gun off and shut me up, Clegg? You hear him, Marshal? You see what a coward he is? I can't help you, Clegg. Lock him up, Marshal. Go on, lock him up. You heard me. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. Then do it. Not very likely. All right. You're wearing a gun. Are you a coward, too, Marshal? Uh, Morgan, come outside. I want to talk to you. Okay, Marshal. You're both cowards. That's what you are, cowards. Why didn't you kill him in there, Marshal? That was your chance. I'm not a gunman, Morgan. I'm a lawman. Won't you ever understand that? Maybe I'm beginning to... Look, Morgan, it's no use. I'm not going to fight Clegg. Now, you can't use the law for your own revenge. That's not what it's for. Now, why don't you forget this and go back home? Marshal, do you think I'm a coward because I won't put on a gun and let him kill me? I don't know what to think, Morgan. You seem to be doing all the thinking these days. My brother Abe was murdered, Marshal. He was murdered. I'm sorry, Morgan, but there's nothing I can do. Now, good night. <laughs> Listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or out driving? Oh, there you are, in the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other, firm and 
pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Everybody, Chester. Why is the town so quiet this afternoon? Everybody's seen you riding in, I guess. Huh? They've been waiting for you to get back. Waiting for me? Why? I told them you'd be back early afternoon. There's trouble here this morning, Mr. Dillon. You mean a shooting? Yes, sir. Morgan? Yes, sir, it was Morgan. Yeah, so he put on a gun after all, huh? No, sir, he was unarmed. What? He ain't dead, though. At least not yet. He's up at dawn. Where's Clegg? Clegg must have saw you ride in, too. He's standing across the street now, behind you there. Ah. Well, I won't keep him waiting. I hear you shot another man, Clegg. He deserved it. Did he? I warned him about following me around. It drove me half crazy. So you stopped him. He slapped me. No man can take that. No. Not even his brother Abe could. (laughs) Say, I plumb forgot about that. You told me once how smart you are, Clegg. I guess you forgot about that, too. What do you mean? Morgan was unarmed. You gonna try to put me in jail, Marshal? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try. Now you're forgetting I also told you I'm too fast for you. Maybe you are. I'm arresting you, Clegg. Keep your eyes on mine, Marshal. I want to see the look in them when it hits you. That's the best part. Now? the shots, Matt. I see Clegg still lying there. Not if he's got any friends that can move him. I doubt if he has. A man like that. Uh, I guess not, Doc. You did it the only way possible. I was trying to arrest him, Doc. I didn't walk out there to shoot him down. How's Morgan? With two bullets in him, he's doing as well as might be expected. I don't mean in what? He's dying, man. Yeah. Now, well, let's go see him. Matter of fact, there's no reason at all he should have lived this long. I can't understand it. Most men would have died on the spot, shot up the way he was. Morgan? Marshal? I heard some shooting. Didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Was you in it? I was. And plagues did. That's how you wanted it, wasn't it? That's how I wanted it. It's what I've been hanging on for. Morgan, you knew he'd shoot you when you slapped him, didn't you? I had him on edge, Marshal. Planned it that way. Yeah, I thought so. And you were willing to die just to get me to face him, huh? There wasn't no other way. I couldn't have killed him myself. Well, I can't say I admire your thinking. But you're sure not a coward. 
He murdered my brother. He murdered me the same way. But we got him anyway. Didn't we? Didn't we, Ma? Well, he, he was right. He won. Even if they had to die to do it. Yeah. But you know something, Doc? I feel like a hangman. You made an executioner out of me. And I don't like it. I understand that, Matt. I... But you'll forget it. You'll forget it. In time. Yeah, sure. One more thing to forget. Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. On the frontier, bands of marauding Indians weren't too uncommon. And next week, during an attack, three people are killed. But not by the Indians. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Vic Perrin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Take a tip from the L&M people, the people who have put the pleasure back into cigarette smoking. Take the L&M Miracle Tip, the tip that lets all the flavor of superior tobaccos come rich, come clean, come easy. Once you light up an L&M, you'll understand why we say they're so good to your taste, so quick on the draw. It's the pure white Miracle Tip that adds so much to your enjoyment. So make today your Big Red Letter Day. Change to L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.